Hello. So this is the last of our review chapters of a content that you should have already covered in your earlier courses. And for that reason, these videos have been fairly short and to the point. If at any stage you feel that you might need a little more detail or are not sure about what I'm referring to when going through these videos, please go back to your original materials. So, in our last chapter, we reviewed the most important parts of a generalized model of a cell. But cells do not exist alone in the body. In fact, there are a few organisms that are made of only a single cell. These are known as unicellular organisms. But for the most part, most living organisms are multicellular. This means that they are made of many cells. In case of a human, there are approximately 30 to 40 trillion cells, depending a little bit about the size and age of an individual. But this number alone gives us a cue that it is a lot. And therefore, all of these cells must work together. So let's talk about tissues. So individual cells are specialized. We saw in the last video that there are over 200 different types of cells. Remember, the one that we looked at was just a general model. And each of these cells performs specific functions typical to that cell. And tissues instead are groups of similar cells in the same area. And these cells share similarity in their structure, but are also similar in a way that they perform together a shared function in a body. Well, the field that studies tissues is known as histology. And this is important. To make life easier, we commonly categorize tissues in one of the four major tissue types. We have epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues. And we will go through each of these, although only briefly, as a revision. So, let's go through some examples of where we might find each of these tissue types. And the first one that we are going to start with is the epithelial tissues. These form boundaries between different spaces. For example, the skin is a great example. Epithelial tissues can also serve functions such as being protective layer and even secrete and absorb or filter materials. To me, all of these sound pretty applicable for the skin's role. In fact, our first proper chapter on this course focuses on skin, and you will learn all about it then. Another good example that is a very good one, I think, is epithelial tissues that align the digestive tract and other hollow organs. These as well form boundaries, protect, secrete, absorb, and filter materials. Let's look at connective tissues next. This is an incredibly varied group, but I have picked some examples to get us started. Connective tissues do often what the name suggests, connect things, physically or physiologically. So these provide support, of course protection, and bind other tissues together. When I think of all these characteristics, one that comes to my mind is obviously bones of the body. Some of these carry weight, like femur, while others, like bones of our thoracic cavity, this is chest cavity, protect delicate organs by enclosing them inside. Think of a brain. The skull is a great protective casing, right? Well... Tendons are another great example of connective tissues. They bind muscles to bones. And my final example here is fat and other soft padding tissues. 
Fat tissue, known as adipose tissue, serves an important role, for example, protecting delicate internal organs, so some is good. There are other special cases of connective tissue, like blood, where surprisingly is classified also as a connective tissue. But we will leave those for later. Now, let's have a quick look of muscle tissues. What do muscles do? Well, their main function is to contract in order to result in a movement to be generated. That's all that they do, to put it very simply. And there are different kinds of muscle tissues, three types in fact. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones, and these are typically the largest muscles that you can think of. Like here, we can see skeletal muscles bulging under the skin. Well, we can also have cardiac muscle tissue. This muscle tissue type is found only in the heart, and it is characterized by a rhythmic contraction, which enables our heart to pump blood around the body. And then we have something known as smooth muscle. These muscle masses typically line walls of hollow organs, like in this example. Without smooth muscle layers of the stomach, it would be just a sac unable to mix food or push it onwards to the rest of the digestive system. And we also find smooth muscle around blood vessels to control the vessel diameter. The fourth and last tissue type that we will look at quickly here is the nervous tissue. Nervous tissues are all about internal communication within the body. And a couple of examples that I have picked here are your brain, of course, this big lump of nervous tissue. And I also wanted to include the spinal cord and nerves, which are a little like the wires connecting electronic appliances in your house to the electric sockets. So, that's our four basic tissue types as a review. And in the next video we will look just briefly each of these in a little more detail. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.